Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're about to get started here with our Bouge Quick Start session. Settle in and you're going to learn a lot today. We are now streaming live on Facebook as well. So if you know anyone that needs to watch this, have them jump on with us. I'm going to keep an eye on some of those questions as well. Well, welcome, welcome officially to the Bouge Quick Start. My name is Michelle Hoyt. I'm Manager of Education and Development for REMAX Integra. We're an independent region of REMAX. If you're joining us from the company-owned regions, we welcome one and all because we are all using the Bouge platform here in the United States. And I promise you, you're going to learn a lot. We do this once a month. For those of you that are brand new to REMAX, this will be especially helpful to you because I'm going to walk you through the full setup of the Bouge CRM, the campaigns, the websites, everything in between, as well as the REMAX search app and Bouge CRM mobile app. All right, so we have a lot to go through. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I promise you this is gonna be a little bit lengthier session. My goal is to get you finished and completed by the end of this. You're gonna be all set up and ready to accept leads from REMAX.com and all the Bouge websites. And my goal is to have you done in 75 minutes. So that would put us at 15 past the next hour, okay? This is being recorded. It will be sent to you. And it's also being posted on the REMAX Integra YouTube channel. So again, welcome one and all. My name is Michelle Hoyt. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we will get started here. So let me get this pulled up. All right, so before we get into Bouge itself as a program, now, first of all, access to Bouge. Hopefully, if you're new to Remax, hopefully by now you have received your login for Max Center because that is the one and only way you can access Bouge on the desktop. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to actually pull up my phone on the screen. And in the meantime, uh, we'll keep an eye on, like I said, questions. Take note of the chat box and the Q&A box that's located on the bottom of the Zoom screen for those of you on Zoom. And for those of you watching on Facebook, hello. I will pay attention to those questions and we'll do my very best to get to those and help you answer those. Um, what we want to do though is what I want to address first and foremost is that when you're, you're doing a lot of business right now, it's spring market, <clears throat> there's so much happening in each of your worlds. And a lot of the things that you need to do is on mobile, right? So how do you use Booge on a mobile device? How do you accept leads? How do you get set up and ready to go so that you can respond to those leads right away? That's what I'm gonna help you with. So what I'm gonna do now is I'd like you, for those of you following along, please pick up your mobile device. I'm sure it's right next to you. And I'm gonna walk you through the setup of a couple of very key things so that you can start using Bouge right away from anywhere. And that's what the key is. So that you don't always have to get on, open up your computer and jump on it and see the details. There's plenty of information that you can access from the mobile device. All right, so let me go ahead and get this pulled up. And in just a second here, you should see my iPhone. So I apologize to the Android users. I have only access to an iPhone, but I will do my very best to help you and guide you through this, these steps of what we're about to do. Now, the first thing that you wanna do in order to be able to accept leads and to use Bouge on the go, the one app that you do want to download is the Bouge CRM mobile app. Now, CRM obviously stands for Client Relationship Management. So we're going to have you walk through that and I'm going to find, help you find that. So in the Google Play Store or the App Store, it's called the Bouge CRM mobile app. And it looks like this. You'll see my cursor circling here. And it's actually, uh, there's a little bit of a delay. So give it a second to catch up. Uh, the Bouge CRM mobile app, as you see it here, it's navy blue. It looks like it has white teardrops. This is going to enable you to have access to your contacts on the go. And when you go to accept a lead that gets texted to you, it will default to the Bouge CRM mobile app, okay? So what I'm gonna do now, so hopefully you've located the Bouge CRM mobile app. I'm gonna open this up. 
and it's going to log in. Now, I don't have a lot of activity going on. Like some of you might open this up and go, wow, look at all of this. If you have clients saving favorite properties or asking questions or requesting showings, all that activity will show up here in the inbox. So it's important that you have all three of these boxes at the top checked off. Now, before we get into this, I apologize. I forgot to talk about the most important step. You need your Max Center credentials to log in. Okay, your Max Center credentials will get you into the Boost Sierra mobile app. Now, if you can't find that or don't want to take the time while we're doing this session to do it, make that note to go back and log into the Boost Sierra mobile app using your Max Center credentials. Your password's probably at least eight characters. You don't, may not have it memorized. But that's the beauty of recording these sessions. You can watch this back and pause and follow the steps again, okay? In this view, as you're seeing here, so if you do have, like I said, favorite property events, messages from clients or requests for showings, they will show up here. Your contacts, so you can access all of your contacts using Bouge as your primary contact management system. When I open this up, now, again, I have a demo account, so there's there might not be a lot happening here. <laughs> um, I do have contacts in here, but we'll wait for those to load in just a second. Most importantly, oh, I closed it out. Hold on a second. Let me make sure what's going on here. Yep, that's it. So I know I have contacts in here. And they're just taking a minute to load here. But if you, let's say that you actually want, you just got a lead or you want to search for a client record so that you can start using this in a better way, you can start looking up clients by name and it will actually do that. I know they've been working on this. There we go. So I got something to load here, but I'll just pick one of my clients. And the thing about this that's really great is you're going to, it's real time. So whatever you're doing in the mobile app will sync over to the desktop. So for instance, if you want to contact this client, you can click log call me call or meeting. So if I'm gonna actually log a call or meeting that I just had with this person, I can make notes or at the bottom, notice I can call, text or email this person directly from the Boo Sierra mobile app. What's really nice about it is it will log these interactions and then even on the desktop, they will show up and this will actually count towards what's called a lead score. It'll help determine in a scientific way if this is a really good lead because you're interacting with that person. More importantly, you can see their contact information. So as you see here, there's phone number addresses. You can also go in and edit this information. As you can see, there's a pencil up here. So you will be able to add more details as you get to know the person, add more of their contact information, maybe even some personal details, and more importantly, notes. So you can access and edit one of these contact records on the go. Now, of course, don't hit the trash can by mistake. You're going to accidentally delete somebody. But what's really important I want you to take note of is see these tabs at the top. So when I click on notes, it's going to take me to the notes field. Again, I can talk my notes in or just make some quick notes of something I want to tell this client later. I can go to my tasks. And this is if you want to use the task feature inside of Bouge. It's incredible for those of you that are all about checklists. Um, any additional tasks will be in here. Maybe you set up a, an appointment or a task with this client. But more importantly, as I move this over, the communications tab. Now, remember we opened this and it showed an inbox for your entire database. So again, favorite property events. So I wanna see this property. For this particular client, if they've actually typed and sent you an email back when you've used the Boosh system and responded to you, it will show up here if they text you back because you can actually text from the desktop or the mobile app and they'll it'll show up here as a reply. In addition, any forms they filled out like I want to see this home or I want more information or maybe they just asked a general question. Those will show up here. Okay, so I just want you to see that you can access your database right here from the Boosh CRM mobile app. Now let's go back and I want to show you something that's really key with this. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to share a very important app directly from the Boost Sierra mobile app. Now, what you're going to do is, and my screen might be a little bit blurry here for some of you. I think my internet is going a little crazy today. In the top left menu here, you see it looks like a little hamburger menu. You want to open that up. And when you open this up, it's going to give you some options. Now, notifications have to do with tasks that you've set up or anything like that. So if I click this, 
it will show me anything that's due. I might have had some phone calls or some follow up that was due. And again, that's if you're using the tasks in the system. So I'm going to move this back. And there will be a slight delay, possibly, for those of you that are on Facebook, especially. Okay, so I'm going to open up that menu again. Now, offered leads. If you see a number sitting here, you better open that up and accept that lead right away. So hopefully you've seen this. This is now where you can go to see those leads as they come to you. You can accept those right away. If you get a lead notification, we'll talk about this more in a minute, that doesn't have an accept or decline on it, that's because this person is already tied to you or that the lead was generated on your very own website, which all those leads come exclusively to you, which is great. Most importantly, let's talk about what else you can do inside of here. There is something called a personally branded Remax search app. That is the consumer app. The Bouge Sierra mobile app that we're looking at right now is agent facing. It's associate facing. It's just for you, just for us here at Remax, and that's all it is. It does not show anything to the public. They cannot access it. You have to be a member of Remax to get into it, and you have to be a, an ex, a lead getting leads to get into it. But the consumer technology that's available through Remax.com and the Remax mobile search app, you can have your own personally branded version of it. So that's very cool, right? Now, how do you find that? There's actually a link that's unique to each and every one of you, and you can easy, easily grab it here inside of the Bouge app. So inside of this menu right here, we're going to click. And now what it's going to do is going to give me an option to text that link to someone. So I clicked on copy link, then I chose texting as an option. And again, this is an iPhone, so I apologize to the Android users. I'm sure it's very similar. But I want you to pay attention to something. Take a look at right here. It says begin your home search by downloading whatever your name is and branded Remax app. This mobile URL link that you're seeing right here is unique to you and only you. You can copy this link, save it on your notes on your phone, make it a texting shortcut, whatever is easiest for you to be able to send people all the time. Now, when you text this to someone, the person on the other end, when they receive it, it will prompt them to download the Remax search app on their phone, whether it's Google or Android. And then when they open it and get their account set up, it's going to be already branded to you. So you become their instant preferred buyer's agent. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. So let me just quickly repeat this inside of the Bouge Sierra mobile app. You're in the menu, click branded mobile app where it says copy, click that link. And then you can decide how you want to distribute this. You can email it. You can put it on social media directly, depending upon your phone settings. And, or you can text this, which is what the usual intent is behind this. When the person opens it up on the other end, they're going to have a branded version of your app. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So up here, first of all, if you don't have the Remax search app on your phone, this would be a good time to get it. The Remax search app is white with a red, white, and blue background. You'll see it right here as I'm circling, or hopefully you're seeing that on the screen. So that's right here. Okay, now I'm going to click and I'm going to show you what this looks like when it is branded to a particular agent. So inside of the mobile app, right here where it says menu, I have this branded to a very particular agent. And when I click info, here's this particular agent. So it'll have things like reviews. It will have your, then this is what yours is going to look like to your consumers, your active listings. It will have about you and then social media and a couple of other things. If you see information on here that needs to be added or updated, that all comes from your Mac Center profile, which we'll take a quick peek at in just a second. But something else that's more important inside of here, there's another way to share. So see where it says share. When I click share, it's once again going to give me the option as the consumer to share this app with a significant other, with anyone else involved in the transaction, something you should encourage when you share this with someone, say, you know, you could even let them know they can share it with anyone else involved that would be interested too. Again, anyone using your version of the mobile app, anything that they do, such as save a favorite property, do a search and ask for information on a property, even if it's another Remax agents listing, doesn't matter, they're inside of your app those leads all come exclusively and directly to you, okay? So you become what's called the preferred buyer's agent. 
So that's the mobile search app and that's how that works. So when you're looking at this later, when you're watching back this recording, just know that we talked about the Boost Sierra mobile app. We talked about the consumer facing mobile search app. And there's one more thing I'd like you to do on your mobile device, okay? And this is called a mobile shortcut. The reason I'm gonna have you do this is because the Boost Sierra mobile app is limited in its functionality. It's meant for you to be able to access client information, communicate with them on the go. But obviously it's not as robust as the desktop features of Bouge. And what I want to do is make sure you know how to get to those from your mobile device, especially to see more additional client details. Okay. What you're going to do is there's not a Mac Center app for this particular feature. There is something called Mac Center Go, which is for news. However, what you need to do is, and you'll see I've done this several times, here's what it looks like. It looks like an app, but it's really a mobile shortcut, just like you do on your desktop. Now, how do we do this? On an Android, you need to go to Chrome. On iPhone, you need to go to Safari. So go to Safari and click on this browser, which is the native browser, and let's click on, or let's type in remax.net. Remax.net. Just like you went on desktop. Now I've got my phone set to remember my passwords, which I'm going to show you how to do right after we're done here for iPhone. <laughs> but so watch what happens when I click use my login. It's also going to use my face and it's going to log me right into Mac Center, which is very cool. One of the things that becomes very frustrating, as you know, when you're on the go is try when it asks you to log in again or remember a password. So again, you can, you're gonna use your Mac Center credentials just like you do for the Boost CRM mobile app, okay? All right, now look at this. So this is the Mac Center platform, but on mobile. So everything is, is really mobile responsive. It's set up, you can log into Boost, you can see client information and get to all the details that you need to. You can even go into Design Center, you can search for other agents for referrals, but I mean, this is Mac Center. Now here's the key though, you have to save it as a shortcut. On an iPhone, what you need to do is make sure this toolbar down here is showing at the bottom. All right, so I'm circling right here. And then right here, you're going to have this square with this arrow. I'd like you to click that. Now it's gonna give you another menu. You're gonna move this up to where it says add to home screen. So see where it says add to home screen right here in the middle. And on Facebook, again, I'm sorry, there might be a slight delay in what I'm saying versus what the screen is showing. That's just unfortunately the way it streams. Um, okay, we're gonna add this now by simply clicking add and it's already calling it out as Mac Center. So see what it does, it drops it at the end of your apps. All you have to do is open it up. And once again, log in with your credentials. So I'm just gonna click right there. It's gonna log me right in just like it did before. So now, like I said, you can get to all the desktop versions. Now it's gonna look a little distorted in some places, but you can still get to do what you need to, okay? All right, let's talk about some, this for a second now. How do I get my passwords to save? Now on an iPhone, there's a setting in your settings. So go to the main settings on iPhone. On Android, there's probably a similar way to do it. If you check your apps, or maybe you want to make a note to go look it up on YouTube or Google on how to do that. But right here under settings, you want to open up settings. Then what you want to do is you want to scroll down. Okay, keep going down to where it says passwords. Okay, so let me see. I'm kind of watching to see if Facebook stream can catch up. So it's gonna actually open that up for me. Now there's going to be autofill passwords option. When you open this, make sure it's toggled over to the right so that it's on. And then because this is an Apple device, you want to allow filling from what it says keychain. So keychain is an Apple term that basically links all of your logins and your browsing history and all of that together so that it can remember your passwords. You can use Chrome as well if you're partial to Chrome I use Chrome on desktop, but I'm a Mac user. But on your phone, if you use the Chrome app, you can also have the filling autofill in for you from there too. So that's just a little tip for you. Like I said, Android, if you can uh, definitely do that, that would be great. 
Um, one quick note on Android, if you have an Android, I apologize, I skipped this step. When you're looking to set up a mobile shortcut, so let's go back to Mac Center. In, I, had I had shown the option for iPhone users to save it as in add it to their home screen. But for Chrome, there should be three little dots on the top right corner here for Android. If you click that, there should be a drop down menu and one of the choices should be add to home screen. Okay. So just a quick note on Android. So that concludes the mobile part of this program. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm kind of watching the chat and I'm watching Facebook. So let me pull this off the screen and we should be in a good place. All right, here we go. Okay, so we talked about mobile, we covered that. Let's talk a little bit about Mac Center and a really quick overview of your profile because it's so very important because it, that information feeds over to some very important places. You're going to go to remax.net. You're obviously going to be in your home screen. Now yours might look a little different than mine because you may have not favorited certain the same apps I have, um, but for the most part, you'll see news and everything else. You can, you can click on apps right here. And instead of seeing favorites, you want to click on all. So that way, if you're not seeing everything, that's what you want to do. Now, a couple of things. So before we get into the Bouge app, um, first of all, favorite the Bouge app because that's going to be a very important place for you to go to see your client information and all of that. But let's talk about your profile, which you can access from pretty much any page on Mac Center. And that's located right here in the top right corner. You're going to click update profile. And this is going to take you directly into your profile. And I'm going to talk about some very key things you should do. So this is also part of your homework. If you open this up and you do not have a picture here, you need to cl immediately click on photo and make sure you are adding a photo. The photo definitely needs to be high resolution because otherwise it may appear pixelated or grainy on your website, on remax.com and on the referral directory for your peers to find you. That is not a good thing. We want you to present yourself as good as you possibly can. So make sure it's at least one megabyte. A professional photographer will know exactly what that means if you don't, but most professional headshots, even smartphones take super high resolution photos. But be sure to upload something clear, crisp and recent and uh, something that presents you in a good way. So when you're done with that, it may take a, you know, a little bit of time, maybe a few minutes, a half hour before that will actually update, but it should be pretty quick. The other stuff that you want to take a quick peek at is your general information, most importantly, your contact information. Now, as a quick side note, there's something here called an ISP email. So each and every one of you has a Remax.net username that you got in the system. So if you're new to Remax and trying to make sense of it all, uh, Remax.net, you have a username that gives you access to the tools and to a lot of things like what we're talking about today. However, that's not your primary email. It does forward to your primary email. So right here where it says your remax.net and then your ISP email, that's just where it forwards to. So it still goes to your primary. There's no inbox for remax.net. You can use it on signs. You can use it on business cards. And a lot of your communications out of the remax tools come from your remax.net but it does get forwarded to your Gmail or whatever your primary is. Make sure that you're editing here to make sure it goes to the right place because here's why it's important. Your bouge leads from remax.com and the websites will get sent to your remax.net, which means it's going to hit your primary inbox. So make sure this is correct. There's no typos, or if you've updated your email address recently, it's going to the right place. You want to take the time to fill out your social media information and add your website link. When you get your website set up, I'll show you where to grab your URL and come back here and post it in, or at least show you where to get it. If you want to assign a custom domain, you can, but the important thing is that you publish your website and then get it added to your profile. Of course, add your phone numbers. Uh, what's really important too under professional details, this is where you want to go and fill in your specialties and your service area. So your office will have service areas filled in that will be grayed out. So you won't be able to change those, but you can add some additional service areas, five to six of your very own, the areas that you specialize in. Maybe your office is located in Minneapolis, but then you specialize in the suburbs like Eden Prairie and Lake Minnetonka and those areas if you're in Minnesota, for example. Uh, very similar in all cities. Think about the areas that you specialize in 
and focus on those and put those on your profile. Personal details, this is part of your homework. Please think about and as soon as possible, write a personal bio for yourself. Whether you're new to real estate or not, or just new to Remax, this is a good time to update your bio. And it really doesn't have to be a long narrative. It doesn't have to be three or four paragraphs. It needs to be just simply short and sweet. Who you are, where you're from, what services you offer your clients, what makes you different, uh, what you like to do outside of work, maybe hobbies or things like that. So there is no spell check inside here. So when you go to add this, it's probably best you do this on a Word doc or Google doc where you can copy and paste, but write something very personal about yourself that will speak to those that are reading it, especially potential new clients. Add your education, your civic activities. If you're involved in community activities or organizations, or just support them and maybe contribute every once in a while, add those to your profile. Those are conversation starters. These do show to the Remax agents in the referral directory, not necessarily to consumers, but just to let you know. Hobbies, same thing. Great way to start conversations with your peers. If they have a client who's, he's uh, really into golf and he's transferring to your area, then they're gonna look to find that common connection between you and their client that they're referring you. Lots of success stories around making sure you fill all this out. And of course, if you're multilingual. The, the most important piece of this though is the MLS affiliation. So make sure that you are taking the time to look at this and make sure your MLS feed is connected because this is what associates you to your listings on the on remax.com and all the bouge websites that are out there, okay? So if you don't see anything live here, you can click to add it here. If you need help, you can always reach out to support. For those of you in the company owned regions, it's product support at remax.com. For those of you in Integra, it's support at remaxintegra.com. And, uh, oh, I see, I'm sorry, Heather, I see your question that just came up. What if Keychain or Chrome don't, don't come up on your iPhone? Make sure you've updated the latest version of software on your iPhone. I don't know what version or what iPhone you have, uh, but you know, definitely take a look at that. Um, like I said, if you've updated and it's still not showing, then uh, you may want to do some research on YouTube to see how you save passwords if that's not there. I've, I'm on YouTube all the time looking up things and I'm a trainer, but um, I couldn't without seeing it. I'm not sure I could help you, Heather. So sorry about that. Great question though and great to notice that. All right, so let's click over to, where, that's your Mac Center profile, by the way. Um, so let me go ahead and move this over and let's get into Bouge, all right? So the good thing is so all you have to do is click on Bouge to get into it. And one thing really quick, I did mention support. So let me just quickly type in the chat box for those of you on Zoom. Again, if you are in the company owned regions, then you're going to go to product support at remax.com. Integra, it's support at remaxintegra.com and that's for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Indiana, the six New England states, and then you will get help on anything technology that you're looking for. They can help you with Mac Center, Bouge, and everything else. Uh, please feel free to reach out. Okay, now when you open up Bouge, if you're brand new to Remax, there's a possibility you might see a setup wizard where it's going to say accept the terms and it's going to ask you to go through a series of screens. If you're seeing that right now, please go ahead, accept the terms, and keep hitting continue. Don't worry about filling out what you're seeing in front of you because I'm going to show you where to find that right now. And it's going to kind of power you through that really fast. All right, so let's take a quick peek. And what do we do next? So it's important that we, before we get into Bouge, so like I said, catch up with us if you're going through the setup wizard. Your dashboard might be blank. I have a test account. I've been doing a lot with it. Um, you can customize this later on. But I think it's important that we talk about how leads work from a lead routing perspective in the Remax system. So I'm just gonna make this a little bigger so that you can see it and kind of help you understand this from a much better perspective, okay? So let's kind of power through this. All right, so this is still applicable. I know this says March. <laughs> All right, so here's how lead routing works. When leads come in from Remax.com, a consumer puts an inquiry in, a question, a request for showing or whatever they're doing, the system is very first going to look to see, does this person 
already have an affiliation or a preferred buyer's agent in the system. So if they're using your mobile app, you are their preferred buyer's agent. If they signed up on the desktop and chose you to work with you, you are the preferred buyer's agent. If there is a preferred buyer's agent, then the system will send all lead activity inquiries, everything to the preferred buyer's agent. That's it, end of story. Now, let's say that there is no preferred buyer's agent. This is a first time visitor to the site or they, you know, they just don't have a preferred buyer's agent. They're going to inquire on a listing, that's a Remax listing. That lead goes directly to you as the listing agent. Now you have one hour of exclusivity to accept that. If you miss it, it will get re-offered to other agents every 15 minutes until someone gets it. And those are agents that have signed up for that zip code, which we're gonna talk about. Now, let's say it's a non-REMAX listing lead. So what is that? That's a listing that's a, a, a competitive brand. It's not by a REMAX agent. So on REMAX.com, consumers can search and find all active listings in your entire MLS, which includes the competitors. When someone asks about that, what's gonna happen is the system will then take that lead and it will send it to agents that are eligible for leads in that zip code that they signed up for that matches that property. And once again, one hour of exclusivity and then it gets re-offered, okay? In these two scenarios, you become what's called the assigned agent, which is different from the preferred buyer's agent. Then there's something called a general account registration. If someone goes on to remax.com and decides to create an account based upon where they're geographically located, that will get sent as a lead, a bona fide lead to agents that are in that market area. Once again, that particular zip code. And you'll see the pattern and how the leads get go out in just a moment. But all three of these scenarios determine what's called an assigned agent, okay? However, the preferred buyer's agent means you have all lead activity, no matter whose listing it is, Remax or otherwise. Okay. Uh, let's see. So um, Anna's asking, I'm not sure I got to the screen. I'm actually on a pause right now. So this is actually, this is a slide that I'm showing you. You don't have this, but I will be happy to send it afterwards. So we're, Bouge is behind my screen right now. I'm showing you slides just so you understand the lead routing process. So Anna, I hope that helps. Um, so where does the lead come into? So Sandy's asking, that's a great question. We're gonna look at that now, but it comes via text and email, providing you have those notifications set up. And then the lead itself will go into your Bouge contacts. Okay, so that's a good question. And hi, Sandy. All right, so once again, you have one hour of exclusivity when it says accept or decline. There's urgency behind that lead. Okay. Now that does apply during the business hours of 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. in your local time zone, no matter where you're located. If leads come in outside of those hours, then you have that lead, but you need to accept it before the clock strikes 8 a.m. the next morning. So that's really good. Now leads are reoffered every 15 minutes, one agent at a time until it's accepted. So again, I'm just showing you what the lead routing is. You don't have access to this and I'm going to give you these slides. Okay. All right, so once again, if it's a REMAX listing lead, even on your own listings, you have a one hour exclusivity. Now I wanna remind you for the internet world, one hour is a really long time. So hopefully you are able to get to these leads within a lot shorter time than that. But if you, for some reason you miss your lead within an hour, every 15 minutes, it'll get reoffered. Now, so if you get a, a listing lead on another REMAX agent's listing, don't question it. It's legitimate. I mean, truly what's happened is probably that original listing agent missed it. It could also mean that you're the preferred buyer's agent for that person too. So there's a couple of scenarios. So hopefully that helps. Uh, the round robin process is how Remax.com addresses the lead routing. So what that means is when there's a re-offer situation, first of all, that when there's an initial offer situation on a non-Remax listing, especially, or zip code type setup, then it's going to look for the person that's gone the longest without receiving a lead. Once you've received a lead, then you go, go to, you know, I hate to use the expression, but the back of the line, so to speak, you go to the back of the line and then you have to wait your turn until you get another lead in that particular zip code till it passes through everybody else that's signed up for that zip code, okay? 
So once again, it'll look for the, when it gets reoffered, the system looks for the agent that's gone the longest without a lead and second longest and third longest until someone gets it. Okay, so let's talk about lead eligibility. In order to be eligible for leads, you must have at least one zip code filled out. We're gonna look at that in a second. Or you have to make sure you don't miss three leads in a row. By missing three leads in a row, that means you're just, they're just completely gone. You don't get to them within that hour exclusivity. The system's going to think you're not interested in leads, but your broker will have the ability to re-enable you. So the moral of the story is don't miss three more than three leads in a row, okay? All right, let's talk about lead acceptance. So Sandy was asking, where do the leads go into? How do you get them? So there's the, the Boost Sierra mobile app will notify you as well with notifications, but you'll also get an email. You will get a notification on the desktop and you get a text message. So there's plenty of notifications going on when you get those leads. Lead sources, what type of leads will, will you be receiving? So you'll receive leads from your very own Agent Bouge website, from the search app. We already looked at that, the consumer search app. If you're part of a team, there's a team website and that will generate leads of which you'll be, you'll be eligible to get leads from those. Talk to your team leader. Office websites, so your broker owner has their very own standalone Bouge website just for the company. Those leads will go directly, um, get routed to all of you and spread out and the listing leads will come to you. And then just like we had the lead routing set up on Remax, it's going to go around to those of you that are eligible for those leads and those zip codes. If you're part of a multi-office company, it's the same thing. And then realtor.com, uh, excuse me, remax.com. You can also set up what are called lead parsers where you can have realtor.com, Zillow or HomeSpotter leads come directly into this platform. Something else that's not on here, if you use the Megaphone platform, uh, those leads as well will come into your account. You know, as I said, if you need help here at Remax Integra, go to maxhelpsyou.com, support at Remax Integra, or if you're with a company owned regions, product support. And that's located inside a Max Center. Thank you for kind of bearing with me on that. I just wanted you to understand the true lead routing process. Let's look at our settings, okay? So if you were going through the setup wizard, you wanna to go to your picture in the top right corner, we're inside a bouge, and you wanna click on settings. Now we're gonna click on settings pages. Then we're gonna click on contacts and leads. Okay, so contacts and leads. Contacts and leads will then take us to, let's go to notifications. Make sure all of these are checked off because this way you won't miss any lead activity. So just to give you a quick rundown, you have the ability, once you have a contact inside of your Bouge database, you can actually share that with another Remax agent anywhere in the US for a referral. It's fantastic. So if you wanna have those notifications done here that, or that someone has referred or shared a lead with you, that's even better. You can also be notified when leads come to you via app, email, the web is grayed out. So you're always gonna have notifications coming on the desktop version. So that can't be avoided. But then also um, import and export of your database, you can be notified. But the text message ones for lead activity is so very important, make sure that's checked off, okay? All right, let's talk about tags for a minute. Tags are categories or labels that you could assign to certain groups of your contacts in your database. Again, this database of yours is yours and yours alone. You're the one using it. It has to make sense to you and it has to work for you. The system has assigned labels or tags, if you would, or categories in gray. So you'll see those are all system assigned. You can't edit those, delete those. Those are already there. Very common ones, buyer, seller, open house, first time buyer, attorney, that sort of thing. But you'll notice there's a number of them that are custom that I've added that I've color coded. So let's say that you're part of a chamber of commerce. You know, Maybe you wanna group those contacts all by that. This is all searchable, which will make sense in just a minute. You had a golf outing, you had some type of a, hopefully we get to have golf outings this year and you have all of those things. So what you do is if you wanna add a tag, let's say that you're part of a business networking group. You could just say my Tuesday breakfast group, okay? And then you can assign it whatever color you want. So we'll just pick, uh, let's see, I'll just pick violet here and hit add tag. Okay, so that, that will be added here. 
And let's see, that's my Tuesday group. So I, there's three pages in here, so I gotta go find it. But what this means is by having these tags, whenever I enter, let's say that someone new joins my Tuesday group, I can just enter them into my CRM here right away and, and assign them that tag as I'm putting them into the system, which is great. And then, like I said, you can search for contacts based upon what tags they have. That's what a true CRM is for, is for you to be able to organize and really take advantage of all these tools that are inside of here. Here's my Tuesday breakfast group all in violet. It's ready to go, it's permanent. I can use it on any contact moving forward, whether it's multiple contacts or one at a time, okay? Uh, take a, let's take a quick peek at custom fields. This is really important as well. There are some things that you wanna know about your clients. You gotta think about that. What do I wanna know about my clients other than the obvious name, address, where they work? There, you know, what, what else do I want to know? You know, you will, there's a field on, on a contact record where you get to see and can set up their work anniversary, their home anniversary and their birthdays and wedding anniversaries and all those kind of fun things. But why not take it a step further? This is where you can choose up to 12 custom fields. And you'll notice what I've done here is I've come up with some things. How about favorite restaurant? You know, what a great closing gift if, uh, or, or let's say that you know, especially right now, they've lost out on some bids. If they're trying to bid on properties and you want to keep their spirits up, get them a gift certificate to their favorite pizza place. Or again, like I said, that could be a closing gift. So there's, there's just little things to know about your clients that really will go a long way because they're thoughtful and they're meaningful to them. But besides the obvious, you know, of course, if there's pets involved, you want to get a pet's name. If you can take it a step further and get the pet birthday, even better. How about the hobbies of the client? They're a golfer, they're whatever. So these exist on all contact records and you can fill them out as you start getting more details about the client. Some of these are just, you type in text, some are date pickers or a calendar shows up or it's a drop down. okay? Now let's look at really quick offered leads. This is where it's vital that you have at least one zip code filled out. These are zip codes of which you want to receive leads from especially when it comes to non-REMAX listings or just a general consumer inquiry or they sign up for an account. And then even more importantly, if, when those leads get re-offered, what zip codes do you wanna get leads from? You can choose up to 10 and you should. Even if you're in an area that's more rural and you only have maybe six or seven zip codes to pick from or less, still choose the ones that might be a little further out. Repeating zip codes will not make a difference. In the past, we've had systems where it would, but um, make sure that you are casting a wider net to get leads. If it's a two hour drive and you don't wanna go there for the lead, keep in mind there's Remax offices all over the country. You can always get a referral opportunity out of it. It's, it's a residual income stream that you cannot ignore. So make sure you are casting that net as far and reaching as you can and use and fill up every one of those 10 zip codes and give yourself a chance. Now, if you want to filter leads by type and price, select the type of leads you'd like to receive. So this actually changed <laughs> recently. I'm so happy to see this. These are the type of leads you want to receive. These will, so basically anything, especially if you're new to real estate, do not limit yourself. Do not filter anything out. You need anything and everything, including rentals and, and even commercial and farm. Even if you're, you don't know anything about it, refer it to someone in your office, partner up with them, learn. Um, but do not limit yourself whatsoever, especially if you're newer. And it's really your choice, but just a little bit of advice for you. Um, set a price range for leads. Again, would not set a limit on that if you can avoid it. And then put your cell phone number in here. This is really, really important to get those lead notifications via text. And that's why your cell phone number should be filled out here. It's kind of a little strange. There's no save button here. So once you put your cell phone number in here, it's in here. And then if it ever changes, you can change it too, okay? Let me see what we got going on in the chat really quick. Oh, Anna found it. Okay, I don't have that list on left in my contacts and leads. Okay, good. Yes, remember a lot of this lives inside of the settings in the top right of the screen, settings, settings, pages. All right, let's look at our database now and let's talk a little bit about this. So I have some contacts in here. I've been using this as a training account, if you would. Yours might say zero right now, or maybe you've got a couple of leads. But at, at a quick glance, I just wanna let you know, when you get a lead sent to you by Remax.com or even the Bouge websites, when you open up your database, that lead will not necessarily be sitting at the very top of your list. It's going to show alphabetical first. 
However, there's different ways you can go about this. You can actually use these toggles. See where it says create a date? So when I click on that, it's going to show me the most recent lead. Okay. So this one is going to show at the very top, the most recent. Now you could start scanning down here and seeing sources. So lead sources, agent website. This one came from my very own Bouge agent website. And there's the date that it came into the system. Okay. So that's how you can find it. Like I said, just know when you go in your database, and by the way, you can do this on mobile. Remember we set up the Mac Center shortcut, kind of going back to the beginning. But when you get that lead that comes in, again, use the toggle, do create a date and do it that way. Now, if I wanted to save this view where it says save this view, I'm gonna call this, you know, my create a date search. Can't type today. <laughs> Right. And then I'm going to go save view because that way, when I go into here, remember by default, it goes alphabetical, but I can then in the future go into save or load view, just like I have one, you can set one up by city, by lead source, you know, and all of that or lead source search. And when you click that, it's going to load. I don't know if any of mine, see, I won't have any that will show up. Let's do lead source. So this will load in alphabetical order by lead source. So imported versus remax.com, you know, that's kind of how that, that works. But think about saving those to kind of make your life a little bit easier. I mentioned that you can search by tags. So something else you can do is um, we're going to go and we're going to go reset all filters. So we're going to get rid of that if we anything that we put in before. And if we want to search by source, we can. Or right here, we're going to manage these filters. I want to search by tags. I'm going to get rid of source for a second. Now it's got the tags here and it's going to list out. I can now search by any tag that's been entered into this account. So I'm trying to, what's going on with my clicker? There we go. Hold on a second. My trackpad froze. Mac users out there, you probably understand that. Okay. Well, it'll pull up the list of your tags and then you can search by whatever tag you want. Like I said, it's your, uh, your golf outing or your Tuesday breakfast group or whatever it is. There's other ways to get contacts in here. Let's talk about that. You can add one person at a time. So you click on add or import and then you add one person at a time. So this could be a phone call that came in off one of your signs or you're working floor time at your office and you just got a lead and you wanna put this person in the system. Or this could just be someone you met in line at Starbucks, or maybe just anywhere, just having a conversation, you met someone at a party and you've got their contact information, you can put them in here. You can also do that on the Bouge Sierra mobile app. But one thing you'll notice here, I'm gonna show you in a second, you can sync your contacts. Your Google or Gmail contacts can be synced with Bouge as well as Outlook can. So I have mine synced with Google. And when you have that, it's gonna give you the option. Do you wanna go ahead and create a, this is a two-way sync. So if you wanted to automatically create a new contact in Gmail, in addition to here in Bouge, then you leave this button on. If you just want it to be one-sided, meaning on the Bouge side, you click do not sync. So you enter the information here and you're good to go. Oops, sorry, I accidentally clicked on something. That was my fault. All right, so we were in add one at a time. Let's look at importing a list. Now, if you are coming from another brand and you're newer to Remax, and let's say you were using Top Producer, you are using Realty Juggler, or one of these others, um, all of these great things right here. So let's say Top Producer. If you have one of these previous CRM systems, what essentially is going to happen is then it will, when you connect it to here, it will ask you to log into that account and then it will pull all of your contacts over into Bouge and do all the work for you, which is great. However, you can also, let's say that you don't have a previous CRM or it's not on that list. You can export contacts from any source such as the back end of the MLS or your iPhone or LinkedIn or wherever you wanna pull those contacts from. You can actually do so by uploading a CSV file and it will pull that information in. I may not have one here as a good example right up front, but I'll just close that. 
And when you do that, it will walk you through the steps of importing using those column headers. You can also do a mass import of those contacts all as one tag, which is really fantastic, okay? All right, so that's another way. So you can connect to a previous system, you can upload a CSV file, and it'll, like I said, it'll do the work for you. The other thing you can do is sync to Google or Outlook, as I mentioned. I'm gonna show you by going here in the settings because you need to kind of start here. So you go to settings, settings pages, and then we're going to go to system. All right, so in the system, this is where you can do some integration. See, this is where you can connect your lead sources. If you're getting leads from any of these three, it walks you through the steps. So what that means is, let's say you get a lead from realtor.com, that lead will not only go into, come to you from realtor.com, it will automatically load into the Bouge contact record. And it'll say that it's from realtor.com. So it saves you a ton of time. There's no manual work involved or importing involved. It's going to do that for you. Same thing with Zillow. Now, BombBomb, Bomb, this is a subscription, of course, and all this is optional, by the way. So on BombBomb, Bomb, this is video email. I'm sure you, if you haven't heard of that because you're new to real estate, you will hear of it very soon. Video email program with lots of other um, applications that go with it. You can connect that to your Bouge account, which means you can access your video message library and send those out of Bouge. You can also connect paperless systems. So I've got DocuSign set up on my account, but you can do dot loop or zip forms. What this means is then you can use the deals pipeline. You can actually manage your transactions, not to the full robust sense that your dot loop or your zip forms does, but just to keep track of your own deals in the basic sense. You can track your gross commissions. There's a whole deal section here. Unfortunately, we won't have time to get into that, but there's lots of resources on Remax University. Down here is where you can sync either your Google contacts or your Outlook contacts. So you can't do both, but it's one or the other, okay? So remember that's in settings. It's under, so I'll show you again, settings, settings pages and system, okay? All right, so let's keep moving through. I'm just gonna check and make sure we're okay with questions. Thanks for hanging with me because we still have to do websites and we wanna make sure we cover all bases here. So we talked about contacts and by the way, to export your contacts at any time, in case you're interested, um, all you need to do is select either one person and see how the export button shows up or let's say you wanna select all and right here, it'll give you the option to, right here, you can select all your contacts with this click and then you hit export. It will generate a link with the download to a CSV file. So you can do that at any time just to let you know. All right, let's look at campaigns. What are campaigns? So one of the, uh, one of the I guess, longest running terms for marketing in, especially when email first came around years and years ago is the drip campaigns. It's similar to a dripping faucet. You can constantly touch your database with some really nice marketing emails. So first of all, if you go to drip and since you're newer, you may find that you still need to do what's called a download or where you're going to import. It'll, there'll be a button here that might say import your campaigns. Go ahead and hit that button. It should only take really a minute or so for that to download. It will bring over six campaigns. And what these are, these are preset emails, pre-timed emails that will go to certain audiences. So you'll see there's a, for a new buyer lead, there's for existing homeowners, existing renters. Uh, right now it, it's incredible what the interest rates are and your renters could certainly do better by purchasing rather than renting. So this is a great campaign. Once these import into here, let's take a look at that. Let's say that that's one that we wanna send. Now, like I said, these are pre-written emails. They can be edited and you can add more content to these emails. But once you assign or activate a campaign for a particular client or a particular list of clients, then this is the timing of it all. So as you can see, it looks like there's six different, there's actually five different emails, but you can also add to it and you can edit it. You can actually go up here at the top where it says emails and now you can start seeing what they actually look like. So for instance, here's the first one. Now this is set to go out immediately. So that's the initial launch when you assign this campaign to a group of individuals or one person. But you can go in, the next one doesn't go out till 14 days, but I could actually click here and change the timing of it. Let's say I want this to go out 
a lot, a little bit sooner than that. Maybe I think two weeks is too long. So maybe we just want to do five days and you can choose the time of day. So there, so now this one sends five days after the previous email, but let's look at the template. If you just want to see what it says, you're going to look at this and go, I want to change this. Then what you do is you click edit design and it'll take you into this little editing section, which is very similar to the websites. And I can add more content to it. So when I click add block down here at the bottom, now it's going to give me an option to add, like if I want to add a listing block, so this will feature, you know, certain properties that I want to add, or if you want to search by MLS number, um, this will actually give you an option to do that. Okay. Or if I look at that, and I, it'll start showing up here in the preview window. Maybe I don't want that. So I'm just going to hit the trash can. So you, there, really, you can't break this. So I want you to experiment with some of these. Send them to yourself before you send them to a mass group of people. You always want to make sure everything looks good. Now, if you want to edit the text, <clears throat> excuse me, you click the pencil. And then as you can see right here, now I can start going in and editing text. I can even add hyperlinks. So let's say that I want to link a certain word to my website to my Bouge website or you know, maybe schools or something like that. I would recommend you try to keep them within your own little uh, arena because otherwise they could end up going off and on their own somewhere. But you just hit the link button and you tell the system where you want this, the destination for that link and it'll hyperlink it for you. Okay, I'm just gonna go back. Uh, let's say that we've got this in a good place. We're gonna hit save and continue. And now that one's ready to go. I can even edit the subject line, the preview text, and more important at the bottom, let's say I feel like there should be more emails as part of this. I've got a renter who has a year lease, so they can't do anything for a year. Maybe I want to add one so that there's one going out every month. You need to continue to hit the plus button to add those. Okay. Now I do want to put a little disclaimer on that. Keep in mind that email campaigns, uh, the open rates are not gonna be 100%. I wanna set that right expectation. You should still always prioritize personal follow-up, but in the instance, like I just mentioned, if someone's further out there, they can't, for personal or financial circumstances, they can't make a, make a decision or they can't move forward for a year, drip campaigns work really well. Um, so yeah, so Bethany's saying thank you. The whole reason I joined and for the life of me couldn't find the drip campaigns. Um, yes, that's the drip campaigns. Well, they weren't there until a couple of months ago. Um, so they were in development for some time, but we're excited. Bouge is a newer technology platform as of about two years ago. So it's every day there's fun new features going on in there. It's great. So I'm glad you like that, Bethany. Yes. So please take your time. There's really good videos on Remax University. There's an entire Bouge video tutorial library on Remax University that can be located in Max Center. And here's RU. Okay. So yes, newsletters. I'm glad you brought that up, Bethany. If you want to go to, you can actually click here and it's gonna show either this section or you can just go to content templates, whatever you prefer. But this, here's what happens. The Remax marketing team does a great job of crafting this newsletter every month and they'll drop it in there at the, towards the end of the month for the next month coming up. The April one is here and eventually there will be a May one dropped in probably towards the middle to end of next week since we're nearing the end of April, it's hard to believe, or will be. So here it is, it's all written. See, there's an image, there's homeowner tips and things like that and in additional topics. You can go in and you can edit this content. So let's say that I want to do, we're gonna use this template and we're gonna call this our April newsletter. And I'm just going to, this is not gonna be recurring because otherwise I don't have the, I don't wanna send the same newsletter over and over again. So. Um, in the future, we hope to see some automation of that where it's just sort of set and forget. But right now, it's good that you pay attention to see who's getting your newsletter. A newsletter is fantastic, but it also can come across as very impersonal. You don't want to send a newsletter to someone that you're actually working with right now uh, because like for that reason. So you want to keep that more personal. So again, these will be for past clients, those that have already closed, those that 
you know, aren't don't really have any real estate needs right now, but they're people you know, um, just again, to stay in front of them, remind them and stay top of mind that you are the person they should be contacting when they do have those needs. Um, the newsletter. So we can actually go in and edit this just like before, just like with that. So you'll see this is all set up for you in these nice little blocks, but let's say that I don't like the image. I'm gonna click right here and I wanna change out the image. There's actually over 400 stock images inside of the Bouge library, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna click right here under edit. Then what I'm gonna do is click the image itself and now it's going to it's going to ask, actually pull up my library of things that I've put into mine, or I can search by topic. So let's say I want this to say thank you. You'd be surprised. There's actually all kinds of messages inside of this library. And let's just say here's a nice one that's got the beach on it. And we're going to do insert. And maybe your initial message instead of home decor is, you know, I had an incredible month last month. It was really the spring market is in full swing. I can't thank my clients. I just want to start out this newsletter this month by thanking all of my clients and my all my preferred partners and my broker and everyone around me. I couldn't do it without you. You know, so you you decide what it's going to say. So we're going to hit save changes. Then once again, we're going to go back. I like that one, by the way. I might use that a lot now. <laughs> and you can go through each of these image blocks. So once again, you can add, change this image out, or you can add more blocks, which again, you can add the listing block. If you want to add another image, it's up to you. But the newsletter is pretty well ready to go. So you may not have to do too much to it other than maybe swap out some images. We're going to go save and continue. And like I said, just like the drip campaigns, um, pay attention to who's going to be receiving this. You really want to set up, you know, think about the timing of this, who's getting it. Um, you can actually schedule this in advance. So let's say you have some downtime today, but you don't want this to go out until say Friday morning. You can certainly schedule it as well as the time of day. Adding recipients, this is where you do need to set up recipient lists or you can do, you can just send it to everyone. In this case, um, a smart list is where you can drill it down by zip code or town or something more specific. Uh, basic can just be, it gives you the explanations here. This is just a group of people I met at an open house or something like that. A specific recipient list, again, could be tied to an event or something like that. When you add the recipients, the system will flag those emails that are not deliverable. So that helps you out a lot. Okay. so can get very complicated with figuring out recipient lists and criteria of who to send it to, but take your time and always, always, always see where it says send test, send a test to yourself first before you send it to the masses. And that way you can identify if there's any typos because you changed some stuff or the picture's not displaying right or whatever it is. And you can preview it here too. You can also, you're gonna get interrupted. It will happen, save as a draft and exit, and then you can always go back and work on that. So see right now, my April newsletter is in draft. Okay, I'm glad that you like that. That's good. Also pay attention to your listings tab. We won't have time to go too detailed into this. I don't have any in here. This is a demo account, but your listings will appear here. And you can also go into the reports section and generate seller reports. Seller reports will show all the virtual activity on all of remax.com, Zillow, Trulia, homes.com, all of our syndication partners, it will show your clients that people are indeed looking at their property online and it'll give them a nice little report on that. So that's all located under seller reports. And like I said, look for the tutorials on that. All right, let's click on, let me know if there's any questions. We're gonna take this last 15 minutes to talk about websites and then wrap up. See how fast the hour went by. I want to make sure you're in a good place with your website because it's so very important. All right, so your website, there's actually, you know, there's so many things you can do with the website. It's unlimited in creativity and pages, but your website is located right here. And then you want to click on website and dashboard. Now, if you've not done this already, it's very important. You can't build your website and do what some of the things I'm going to show you if you're not published. So under publish, there should be a publish button right here. Just go ahead and turn it on. 
What's the worst thing that can happen? You get a lead, right? Um, the system, here's the best part about it. The website's already built for you. Thanks to Remax and Remax Marketing, they've created what's called out-of-the-box content that's already on your website. It's already ready to go. So hit the publish button. You might have to hit the refresh button really quick. It should then show a blue link right here that says your website is published and available at. So I'm going to click right here. And I want you to do the same once you're published so that you can see what your website looks like. Now I've done a lot of editing to mine, of course, but I'm going to just walk you through because and start scrolling down, say, hey, all this content is here already. What happened? I don't, I didn't do this. And then even in the menu, there's going to be items that'll be here about Remax. Um, they can do a home valuation, which is great. And uh, that, was, that could help generate some seller, seller leads and all kinds of things. But leave that open, okay? So just leave that open for a couple different reasons. Um, first of all, you wanna see that your updates are happening. Sometimes it takes up to half an hour for your updates to happen. But right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at the content of the homepage. We're only gonna have time right now to talk about the homepage. So let's first of all, take a look at the homepage itself. See where it says change homepage. And, the, and what we're changing is we're not changing the content yet. What we're going to be changing is the overall layout of what the home page looks like. And mine's going to look a little strange because I've added a whole bunch of pages. So bear with me. <laughs> um, yours will have a lot less uh, activity than this. But the one that I want you, the two that I want you to pay attention to right now, I have it checked. It's called the agent social layout. The agent social layout will make the image. You will saw I had that picture of that white, really nice white home. Um, with the pillars and everything. That is going to be primary. And then right underneath it is the search bar. If you want the search bar to be primary, you choose the agent search layout. And like I said, mine's got some strange stuff going on here. Yours will actually show examples of it. So agent social layout, agent search layout. I'm gonna leave mine on social layout. Keep in mind, if you move back and let's say you create some content or add content and you start moving back and forth between layouts, it's going to take away all your changes until you go back to the previous template. So be careful of flipping back and forth. So agent social layout, I'm gonna leave it there. Go to the bottom and hit save when you've made your change. Okay. So that should load in here. There should be a preview window showing you kind of what it looks like. Let's click right here where it says edit agent social layout. This is how you get to the content that's actually on your home page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of these so that I can show you what I did and why I did it. And this will be helpful to you for sure. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about, okay, what should a home page have on it? Now, the one thing I will caution you is do not overcomplicate it. I want you to keep it really simple. Okay, keep it simple because it's not so much about all the content that's on it. It's more about are people finding your website? Are you promoting it? Are you adding your domain name to all these different profiles like your Google My Business, Realtor.com, Zillow, Facebook, like making sure you're promoting your own website. It's your virtual storefront. It's your calling card. You should definitely be out there marketing this but we do wanna have some basic components in place. So think the number five, actually four to start with on your website, four key components, search, okay? Make sure the search bar is front and center or easy to find. Number two is about you. So that's your bio. So let's, we're gonna click add block and yours might already be there. Who knows, if not, just get rid of all the others, but we're gonna look for bio. And notice it says this can be edited in a Mac Center. This is why it was very important at the beginning we talked about your Mac Center profile because that feeds over to this block. Very, very important. And that's why you should write a nice bio about yourself. Mine's really short. But then you want to hit save. Notice on the right-hand side, it's a preview window. So if you going into this, you might have been a little intimidated or thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not a, um, I'm not a website developer. I'm not cut out for this. I don't want to do this. I know how, but I don't want to take the time. Um, the beautiful thing about this is, is like I said, it's going to show you your changes. 
and then you're already published. So that's what's great. So then it's just going to look even better when it goes, goes out there. We're going to click add block next. So we said, what else do we need? Search about you. The other thing is you want to add what's called featured listings, featured listings. And if you're brand new to real estate and don't have, you know, those don't have listings per se, which a lot of you are been in the business a long time and have a, sh a really small number of listings because of the market and what's going on. They're going so fast. Um, you want to add featured listings so that there's some element of that on your homepage. Notice it says right here. Now mine's not loading because I have a demo page. I don't have an MLS account connected to this. Yours will load featured listings. It's your six most recent or it's the six most recent from your office. As it says here, you need to make sure you go to your website settings page, which we'll look at in a second to make sure they're loading. The fallback should always be your office listings. So I'm just going to hit save. All right. So bio, we talked about search, about you, featured listings, and finally, how to get in touch with you. How to get in touch with you includes your social media as well as a contact box. So we're going to click add block. And what we're going to do is we're going to then feature the social media element. So we're going to go down here. Did I pass it? There it is. <laughs> social media. And the social media part of it is going to load right away. Now yours will look like this. When you first add it, it's going to have the Remax, the brand social streams. It'll have Facebook and Twitter. Um, notice you can turn on and toggle on all these others, which is definitely a good thing to do. It will go directly to the Remax accounts. So let's say you don't have anything on Pinterest or you're not doing much with Instagram or whatever it is. At least you have those social tiles, those social links here for the consumers that it's important to. It shows relevance and it just shows that you have that presence or that Remax does. But for most of you, by now, you I'm sure you have a, re a Facebook business page and you want to link, instead of having the Remax stream, you want this to show your business page. Now, the key is to keep that page active and current with content. So there's all kinds of pieces of this. But if I uncheck, what you want to do to add your own is you uncheck where it says use Remax profile. And then what you do is you open up your business page on Facebook, copy that link at the top and paste it in here. Now, obviously I've done this already. When you paste in your own link, you wanna click this blue arrow. So then it will update for you. And see now all of a sudden, there we are, it's our live, live webinar. I have the Remax Integra page showing here. And if I wanna add my own Twitter, I would uncheck use Remax profile and add my own Twitter feed, which I could do. Uh, so let's see, uh, then Pinterest, same thing. And then LinkedIn. So this does go to, directly to my personal LinkedIn. Again, you can send everything to Remax for the time being or leave it off until you get your profile <laughs> updated and looking good. And we're just gonna hit save, okay? Now, the good thing about using the Remax stream, like on Twitter, for instance, there's a whole team in Denver that's constantly updating social media content. So the more active that stream is, that just helps initially and overall with the organic reach of your website. It shows Google that you've got content that's refreshing on a regular basis and it will help you show up rather than having a stagnant website that nothing ever gets updated on. So hopefully that makes sense. Search about you, featured listings, how to get in touch with you. Let's, let's complete this by simply clicking add block and you want people to have a way to get in touch with you. So you're gonna add the contact form now the contact form will have whatever title text you want on it. So this could be questions and maybe this isn't what you'll do. Contact me today. Or it could just say contact me today and I'm going to hit save. So it's generally from a consumer behavioral perspective. I do this. You probably do this. When you get on a website, you're immediately if you need to get in touch with someone, you're immediately going to the bottom, whether it's the cable company or whatever, and you look to the bottom, look where it says contact us. So it's very normal to have this type of behavior going on for anyone that visits your site. And they're gonna immediately see this box and go, oh, okay, I can get in touch with you. Now, also in your bio, it's gonna have, it'll have your phone number, 
it'll have your contact information too and this contact me button. That'll go directly to your email, okay? So just so you know, that's how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. Hopefully your page is looking good. Like I said, then what you do is you go to your, you click on this to open it up again and you can do a refresh to see if any changes took place. And if they haven't generally, like I said, it might take up to half an hour. But then you kind of go down and check out your changes. Yeah, see mine hasn't updated yet because I remember I put questions, contact me today. So it'll take a little bit. Okay. Now, so once again, to get to the home page, you go to website and dashboard. The, the one thing I want to end with that's really important is the domain name. This domain name, usually it's uh, it's actually, it's marketing friendly. It'll be your remax.net username. So mine is mhoit. So it would be mhoit.remax.com. So yours will be your username.remax.com. You can add that to your business cards. You can add that to your flyers and you're good to go and use that for marketing. You can also go out and buy a custom domain. Some of you might already have one that you need to move over to the new Bouge website from your previous brand or you need to go get a new one. Under website, you wanna click website and you wanna click on domain manager. Now this is where you should, you can and should lean into our support team. They can actually set this up for you and I encourage that they do, or encourage you to reach out to them. Let's say that you buy a domain such as isellhomes.com, which is probably taken, but that would be a good one. Um, but you wanna go on GoDaddy and find something creative. A lot of you might've already secured your name, but I will caution you on that. If you have a name that people commonly misspell or it's a common name or it's, it's hard to spell or something like that, that might really detract some traffic. It's not gonna altogether take anything away, but you, and you should be proud of your name. But you wanna think in general terms, the way consumers search for information on the internet, especially real estate, they're not gonna type in your name. So as in, in my general area, if someone's looking for real estate, they're not gonna type in Michelle Hoyt real estate. They don't know me. You have to assume people do not know you. So choosing a domain name is important. So you wanna keep it general. Like if you are, let's say that you are in uh, New England, you're, you are in Connecticut. And instead of using your name, you use something like Home Search Connecticut. Although a lot of people misspell Connecticut. Or you could just say, you know, New England home search or whatever. But think about what people are going to typically type in and something more general. Okay. So once you buy your domain name, you can either follow the steps here. There's a video on Remax University on how to do it and point it to your website, or you can have our support team do it. Okay. That was a really fast hour and 15 minutes. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you got some good takeaways from this. We absolutely love hosting this quick start with Bouge for you. There's so much more to be explored. Once again, go to Remax University. You can watch these quick little quick hit videos to remind yourself how to do these features. And uh, let, I'll take a last call for questions. Let me see what it says here. Yes, this was recorded, Sandy. You're going to get a copy of this and you will uh, can watch it back for sure. But go down here to Remax University. There's a whole section that says Bouge, and you're going to be all set. Take a look at all those videos. Like I said, they're super quick and easy to get to. Let's see what questions. Oh, Bethany's asking, do you have an explanation for why my social media only displays Facebook and not Instagram? So if you're talking about, oh, okay, yeah. If you're talking about the streams, it doesn't have an Instagram stream showing or not available yet on the websites. I hope that it does, but right now it's just Facebook, Twitter, or the um, Pinterest. And okay, you figured it out. Great. Thanks, Bethany. All right, everyone. Well, if you're new to Remax, welcome. I hope that you got some good takeaways from this. And like I said, you'll get the recording. Thanks for spending your afternoon with me. Take care, everyone.